Welcome to Memphis AP Chemistry. In this video, we're going to look at solubility equilibrium. At this point, you should know some basics of equilibrium, such as how to write an equilibrium expression of products over reactants. You should also know some basics of solubility. So let's take a look at, it, at an example. Um, this is a common example. This is sodium chloride, which is just normal table salt. And if you add this to water, it's going to be in an equilibrium between the solid sodium chloride crystals and their um, dissolved forms, which would be sodium ions and chloride ions. Now, let's say we have a beaker of water and we're going to add some salt into it. That salt's going to drift to the bottom and it's going to start to dissolve. And as it dissolves, it's going to form these sodium and chloride ions in the solution. And so I have those drawn here. The positive smaller ions will be sodium and the negative larger ions will be chlorine. And so these are going to be dissolved in the water. There's going to be intermolecular forces between each of these charged ions and the water molecules, which is one of the reasons why they dissolve in the first place. They're going to form those intermolecular forces with the water molecules. Now, if you add enough salt, not all of it's going to dissolve. Now, some of these salt particles are going to be forming into ions that will be dissolving, but some of these that are in the solution are actually going to clump back together, and that's going to be the equilibrium part of this. Some of the solid can form ions, and some of the ions can reform the solids. And so that's going to be an equilibrium. So for this, we can write an equilibrium expression for it. Now, if you notice something in the equilibrium expression that I just wrote, I did not include the solid sodium chloride. And the reason for that is we don't talk about solids in terms of the concentration of a solid. And so in our equilibrium expressions, in this time, in this instance for our KSP, we're not going to include the sodium chloride solid. We'll never include solids in our equilibrium expression. We always write products of reactants. So we've got two products here, sodium ions and chloride ions, and they both have a coefficient of 1. And so our exponents here are 1 and 1. It's not over anything because, again, we just had solid sodium chloride as our reactant. This KSP, we use an SP here. It stands for solubility product. And really what this is describing is the maximum possible solubility that, um, a, that something can have in solution. And so at the KSP, we are going to say that this is saturated, meaning that when we reach the KSP value, in other words, whenever the sodium and chlorine concentrations get high enough that they're equal to our KSP value, that's the point at which if we add any more sodium or chloride ions to this, or any more sodium chloride to this, it's not going to dissolve anymore. A precipitate will form. So we're going to look at three scenarios here. Um, we're going to talk about this in terms of Q, which is our um, solubility quotient, or our equilibrium quotient. In this case, the Q is just going to be whatever our sodium and chlorine concentrations are at the moment. We've got three scenarios. One is where Q equals KSP. One is where Q is less than KSP. And one is where Q is actually greater than KSP. Let's take a look at Q equals KSP first. If this is the case, in other words, if our current sodium and chloride concentrations multiplied together, in other words, our Q, if those are equal to our KSP, the solution will be perfectly saturated. In other words, if we add any more sodium chloride, it's not going to dissolve anymore. It's going to stay a solid. Our second scenario, if Q is less than KSP, well, anytime Q is less than KSP, we know that the, that the concentrations are going to move to the right or toward the products. If you look at this up here, that's going to mean that the solid sodium chloride is moving to the right or toward the aqueous sodium and chloride ions. In other words, if Q is less than our KSP, any solid that we add to it is going to dissolve into aqueous sodium and chloride ions. That's if Q is less than KSP. And that will completely dissolve until we get to a situation where Q is equal to KSP. So if we keep adding more sodium chloride, eventually Q will equal KSP. If we add even more, we'll get to a point where Q is greater than KSP. And if that's the case, if Q is greater than KSP, well, this reaction is going to proceed toward the reactants. 
In other words, some of the aqueous sodium and chloride is going to go back to solid sodium chloride. And so we're going to precipitate out some sodium chloride. And again, that's if the Q is greater than KSP.